point actually is that what history tells us is that it's not so much uh, the energy transition that needs to be financed, it's probably that uh, the financial market and investment need the energy transition. And if we do refer to the last century and to the first energy transition that we've seen there, and the one actually that led to the uh, uh, state of the planet today with the uh, ecological and uh, and, and the climate uh, damage that we are facing, uh, we are looking at uh, basically a transition from the train, transportation, and automobile, and uh, aviation, and that takes place at a time that investors didn't know exactly where to invest. And they were, it's very interesting to build a parallel between uh, one sector at a time and the energy sector today. And very interesting to find out that the market by then was dominated by one industry, which actually has been dominated the market for almost half of the century, since 1850, and that all investors have their eyes on one industry, uh, which is uh, basically uh, counting about 40% of the market cap of the Paris Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, or the London Stock Exchange, and even to an extent that the first Dow Jones Industrial was named after that uh, sector. I'm talking obviously about the railway sectors. And what is striking is that 10 years after that, only and before the First World War, the sector had completely disappeared from the marketplace. All the companies went bust. And I think what the parallel I, I would like to build is what kind of lesson this basically, this, um, this market catastrophe can tell us about um, all the stranded assets it left behind. Uh, can tell us about the future of our energy industry. And then uh, there's a few factors, I, I think, which are and should be interesting for the investors to look at. The first one is uh, basically the capex uh, inflation spiral that the fossil industry is facing today. Uh, we are talking about 300% rise in capex for the fossil fuel industry over the last 10 years only. Uh, at the same time, with a rapid declining rate of production, it's typically the same kind, of, uh, the type of business model that I would describe as unsustainable. Uh, the second thing is basically missing uh, the opportunity to foresee the emergence of an alternative uh, ways. And obviously, I'm talking for renewable today, but I'm also talking for the automobile uh, uh, at the early uh, 19th, uh, 20th century. The leaders of the railway industry totally failed to foresee the emergence of the automobile industry. And what is striking is that everything in their hands to be the leaders of that new industry. And the last point as well is basically it was an industry that was the railway industry and the fossil fuel industry that were very centralized, facing a very disruptive model, automobile or renewable, which is by definition very decentralized. And it was very hard to imagine basically this kind of shift and which is very disruptive. Last but not least, I think it's important to remind uh, to today's uh, investors that both railway uh, majors and the, and, the, and the oil majors uh, were basically um, offering very high dividends. You know, the, the yield, uh, there were basically yield stocks and it was therefore very difficult for the investors yesterday, and it is difficult for the investor today to run away from these companies, from this industry that were basically ensuring a very high yield for your portfolios. Mm -hmm.